I will try to make it fun and, and easy. If you have any questions or you want to discuss something, just interrupt me and, and we will do it. So, okay. Uh, my name is Pavel Golub. Um, I'm working for Cybertech, and uh, they call me senior consultant. Um, I prefer to call myself young and handsome developer in the body of senior consultant. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if, you want, if you want to write me, to email me, please, here, here are my uh, contacts, do if you want. A couple of words about the Cybertech. Um, so uh, Cybertech is a completely PostgreSQL-centric company. We have no clients without Postgres. You may want to switch from Oracle to Postgres, but you need to have at least one. So if a company wants to become our client, first of all, we install Postgres, we run it, and only after that, you can become our client. We are a distributed team, so we have six branches and our headquarters in uh, Austria. Uh, these are some of our uh, clients, so please choose your fighter. Um, we also do some products. Um, so Scalefield is like uh, cloud for yourself. If you want to run cloud, we can do this. Cypex is an analog of Apex, means you can create web applications for your database or import from the Oracle. So the migrator is the migration from the Oracle to PostgreSQL. And data masking, enterprise edition, and TDE means transparent data encryption are all like high level grade of PostgreSQL with, of PostgreSQL with something in it. Um, yeah, agenda. Um, I want to uh, describe different approaches uh, that we can take to monitor our database. Um, what tools are available, how people do this, and at the end I want to show you a demonstration of our own tool called PGWatch 2, and maybe if we will have some time I will briefly show you the next iteration of it, next major version, which is not yet available publicly, but for you, only this time, only today. <coughs> and what the difference behind it. Okay, so different levels of database monitoring. Why to monitor? What a dumb question, right? I want to know if we are working, if we can serve our clients, or we are down obviously. Uh, are we fast or are we slow? Um, I want to know how much money I'm spending on, I don't know, on this cloud or on this instance, whatever. Um, I want to have some predictions about my services. Should I upgrade or should I change something or maybe I need to split the, that node into two, something like that. Um, so I would, I would divide these approaches like on high-level system monitoring, uh, uh, um, high-level um, availability, then monitoring of the system on which the base is running, and the specific PostgreSQL features or issues or, or things. So, service availability. The simple one is like to run kind of cron shell script which will periodically ping our service, is it avail available or not. Or we can use like uh, PG is ready um, utility shipped with the PostgreSQL to know if our cluster is up and running. Um, but that sounds like <laughs> not for grown-ups, right? We need something mature. 
Another approach is to monitor the system on which we are running. That's not about cloud, because usually cloud providers uh, don't allow you to have an idea of CPU and memory and whatever and, and, and resources you are using. Well, technically if they do, you have some dashboards, but I'm not sure you can like say if this is useful to you, right? So if, if we are talking uh, about running PostgreSQL on premise, uh, then we want to monitor our system, but we need to know what we are monitoring, what these uh, CPU values are, what these memory values are. Is it the same for Linux or we are running on Windows or, or FreeBSD or whatever? We need to fully understand our system. And if we are talking about the PostgreSQL specific aspects, then I would say that we can uh, split this area into three. Like, first of all, we want to deal with logs that uh, PostgreSQL produces. Then inside PostgreSQL, we have statics, uh, statistic collector, which gives us an idea of what is happening inside our system. And of course, the field of goal of PostgreSQL extensions. A lot of them, millions, and some are extremely useful, some are funny. Log analysis. It's not a beer. Okay, so, um, of course you want to have analysis, uh, analysis of your logs. For that, probably, you want to copy your logs from your running instances or not somewhere in the central repository. Uh, a lot of tools for that. The simplest one might be like our thing with the uh, cron or whatever. Then you want to parse all these logs. Either it will be grip, grab or, or uh, maybe you have some your own scripts or you want to use like some cloud service or I heard that um, Grafana now uh, has this Locky or something product uh, aimed sp specifically for uh, logs. Or you may want to use PG Pager, which is standard de facto for PostgreSQL analyzing logs. Um, before you can have, uh, before you have like something meaningful from your logs, you want to set up your login system accordingly, right? So as you can see right now, for Postgres 15, we have 43 different configuration parameters. And that's hell a lot. In Postgres 11, there was like 30, I don't know, seven, five, and that's what a lot. I don't remember all of them. And for that, I can recommend you use postgresqlcode.nf site. Here you can like uh, check whatever parameter you're interested. So for example, here we want to check log destination, right? So we can see that it's a string, so uh, what values you can set. And uh, for example, you can check how they differs from version to version. Um, for example, here we can see that log mean duration sample uh, arrived in Postgres 13, and for example, um, log startup progress interval arrived in the fresh is in fresh version 15. So, if you cannot remember all these configurations, you may use this site. It's pretty cool, and of course, uh, they have like uh, direct links to the official documentation, but it's like all in one place. If you just need, oh, I forgot, can I put this or that? Just a couple of seconds and you're done. Okay, so um, log destination. Where we are going to log uh, our logs, right? So um, probably you will prefer CSV 
for that, you need to enable the login collector. Um, I, don't, I don't remember in which version um, implemented JSON format. Some of application can consume JSON, so maybe you want to put it to put JSON in, in it. Uh, by default, we are not logging statements. Uh, you may want to, to, to enable it. For example, you, you can enable only DDL statements or only statements that are applying some changes. Uh, of course, log mean duration and log duration, mean messages and all of that. You, you want to set up the system in that way that it gives you the maximum of useful information. And at the same time, you probably want to limit the, the amount of logs to, 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 to somehow make lower consumption of the uh, space. Uh, about statistic collector. So this is the part of Postgres, which I will divide into two parts. So we have like dynamic views, which uh, show you the current situation, for example, which session are now active or which queries are now running, etc. And a set of cumulative views, a lot of them. So they collect information over the time and later you can analyze it and make your predictions. Um, by default, uh, by default uh, not all track parameters are enabled uh, and we have a lot of them so you you may want to enable these parameters to have more information about your system and of course uh, you can reset the uh, the uh, the statistic collector not only everything but particular tables like oh, okay I, I I see that the data in, 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 in this like table is, is not is not useful to me. Let reset it it only and gather some information during an hour or a day and we'll see what happens. Uh, extensions. Um, I must say that PG stat statements is a way to go. Always. I mean, uh, we have a PostgreSQL dot live set of interviews, and every person interviewed said that the best extension for PostgreSQL is a PG star statement. So we like need to rephrase that question like, what the second most useful extensions for you after the PG statement? Um, a lot of them, so PG stat, staple, uh, PG stat tuple uh, can give you an idea about bloating, uh, buffer cache, how to explain, qual stats, etc., etc. What is going on in a real life? Uh, in real life, probably you will have a mix of your own scripts, tools, setting, etc and maybe some big grown-up uh, uh, application for getting uh, logs for, uh, for, for analysis, uh, for, for log analyzing, etc., etc. So which monitoring tools are available on the market in our universe? A lot, I must say. So if you want to have like a list, full list, you may visit our wiki page on postgresql.org. Uh, the only drawback, I see that this list isn't maintained very actively. So sometimes you can find like <laughs> deprecated projects or not up-to-date information. But anyway, this is the good place to start, right? Um, what about like ad hoc troubleshooting? We have a connection string. We want to know what is going on on our system. We don't want to spend a day or, or a week or whatever collecting all these data. We want to see right now what is going on. For that purpose, we have like 10 or, or more of these um, tools. Um, like 
I will start from PG top because it gives you an idea what it is. It's like a top, but for PostgreSQL. Oh, PostgreSQL, right? So uh, PG activity, PG center, PG hero are all um, uh, console tools that gives you right now an idea of what is going on. Uh, of course, like uh, GUI tools like PG admin 4 or uh, dbeaver or HadeSQL, whatever, they also have some dashboards in it. It's up to you if you like more console approach or, or a GUI. So this is how PG activity looks like. So you have an idea what the version, where we are running, what is going on, some, some key values, some key metrics. And after all, you have like um, a list of queries, or if you want to have a list of uh, waiting queries, locks, sessions, whatever. Um, PG admin 4 uh, doesn't provide you so detailed information. It's like more, more user, user oriented. But anyway, yeah, you you can also see like some um, graphs and dashboards there. Okay, so um, what about the continuous monitoring when we want to spend some time uh, watching on the system and collecting all the metrics for to, to have the, the the whole picture? So a lot of uh, like commercial solutions um, like Datadog, Vivid Cortex, Enterprise Manager, from ADB, PG Analyze, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, by the way, today I was surprised that uh, Quest uh, has its own um, monitoring solution. Uh, how, how, dog, dog, dog fight? Ah, foglight, foglight, sorry. Yeah, well, so I will put it into my presentation, I hope. Uh, and of course, we have like uh, open source solutions, well known. Um, the drawback or the, the cons is they are more general and they are using kind of variation of check Postgres script to collect all these metrics and to work with it. Uh, that's fine. What about Postgres specific solutions? So um, PG Hero, uh, POA, which is absolutely cool. Like they have inside already pre-installed some advanced extensions like uh, PG Call Stats, Stat Key Cache, Weight Sampling. <laughs> so PG Clue, which provides you not only with specific Postgres metrics, but also with uh, some system information. And a PG Watch, uh, PG Watch 2, frankly speaking. Uh, so PG Watch 2, what the heck? Why? If we have like zillion of ready um, applications, tooling and whatever, why we need one more? I don't know, because uh, that was before me. Uh, I, I never, I never saw PG Watch version one, and that is you saw it. Oh, really? Was it a shame? It, is it okay? <laughs> okay. So I, I was, I was asking. So can you show me the sources for PG Watch version one? Oh no, no, we, we, we don't know. Uh, no. Okay. So, so PG Watch two. Why do you need another one? Uh, so the idea is to have a tool which you can like start in a minute. No installation, no setup, no settings, anything. Just run, just provide it with the connection string to your target system and it start chewing, right? Uh, so we did that with the help of a Docker. So inside a Docker image, we put everything we need, like collector, uh, Grafana, um, Web UI, um, the special um, special database to store metrics, everything. Put it in the container, 
So you can run it just with one command and start to use it. Why Grafana? Because we want user to add or change or delete dashboards that are not for them, right? So I don't need like 20 dashboards on my screen because I have no, I have so much, I doesn't have, I don't have so much real estate on my uh, small laptop. We wanted to make it non-invasive, no extensions installed. You may, but it's not uh, mandatory. That way, we wanted to give people the ability to monitor cloud providers as well. Because we all know that you cannot install anything on the cloud unless it's allowed by the cloud providers. Um, and we wanted to make it extensible as much as possible. So usually you are gathering metrics with the SQL, right? When you are like asking your um, statistic collector, but you are not limited to it. You may run some uh, shell scripts or uh, you, may, you, you can uh, use REST API to have like some metrics from Kubernetes or, or something like that. And every metric get it this way, SQL, external, or REST API, then will be put into the, um, into the storage and analyzed and will be displayed on, on the dashboard. So um, architecturally, it's nothing complex there. So we have a collector, it's daemon, uh, on the Go language written because in Go, it's very simple to build, to build it for every possible platform. Windows, Linux, we don't care, really. Then we may configure our metrics using the file or environment variable if you want to run it inside a Docker. Then we want to save somewhere our metrics. Um, first, we did it with the InfluxDB. We thought that it's a very powerful solution, it, that it's so powerful that it will allow us to beat PostgreSQL in, in some way. It's not really, it's not the case, because um, timescale DB uh, with the PostgreSQL beats InfluxDB like, and we want to use the um, common SQL. I don't want to learn another dialect of the query language. Because I'm senior consultant, not a young. <laughs> okay, and yeah, uh, of course we can scrap. Oh, oh, scrap, probably we can provide these metrics externally uh, to Prometheus or, Gr or Graphite or even File. And yeah, you want to have like a simple web UI and Grafana, as I said. So this is how. These all looks like. So PG1, PGN, these guys are databases that we want to monitor. Pay attention, nine, version 9 plus, which is very old. But we are working with very conservative clients, and sometimes they need that kind of support. Um, and, whoo, sorry. And this is our Docker, so the collector, the configuration, the Grafana, the configuration, uh, the uh, so sorry, the UI, the configuration, and where the metrics are stored. Usually, it's PostgreSQL plus plus timescale DB. Now, uh, okay. So features, as I said, it's ready to go. Just one click, and we are done. Um, so we support Postgres 9 plus, um, but I will tell you a secret, in new major version, we won't. Uh, the lowest version will be 11, because this is the officially supported version right now. And yeah, maybe, maybe we're not ready to, for at least, to maybe it will be even 12, so yeah. Um, so we have as much as possible pre-configured dashboards in, in metric shipped. 
uh, you can configure everything. Use users, passwords, access, etc., etc. You can use your own Grafana uh, installations, or you can use your own TimescaleDB DB uh, nodes running somewhere, and even you can use like ClickHouse for storing your metric metrics. But mm, again, the problem is the same as with the InfluxDB, different query language. Uh, and yeah, Kubernetes and OpenStack, all these buzzwords. Uh, also, we support um, auto discovery of all databases. So if you can connect to the cluster and you have permissions to list databases, then you can automatically, uh, automatically add every available database under monitoring, right? So just imagine if you have, like, you have um, a cluster where you have 100 of specific special databases for every user, for every client, whatever. You just connect only once, and then it alls, um, and then all of that are um, under monitoring. Um, what else? Patroni support, yes. So the same auto discovery. So you like uh, point it to the etcd or um, or the primary, and it will discover every node member accordingly and add it. Uh, very low resource requirement. That's true. Uh, like we were running several hundreds monitoring uh, mon monitor databases with the one instance, and that was fine. Um, what else? Um, yeah, alerting. Uh, by the way, PostgreSQL community in this year is taking part in the Google Summer of Code. And one of the projects uh, called PG Statvis. Yeah, so um, Boris, Mihes, and me, and uh, Jimmy Angelakos, we are mentors, right? Yeah. And <coughs> so it's. From my point of view, it's another simple monitoring solutions. Jimmy says no, because unless you have alerting, you cannot call this monitoring solution. You can observe something, but unless you have alerts, this is not real monitoring. So um, what can we do with alerting? So um, before, like, before the COVID, I would say. Um, the way to go was to use built-in Grafana alerting uh, facilities. So you, I don't know how it's worked because I'm not like great in Grafana, frankly speaking. So you, you set something and, and then Grafana will send you email or Slack or whatever, or, or like execute some REST API, right? Um, now, I would suggest for complex, for complex logic to use uh, PG Timetable, which is another our product developed by me. So it's a scheduler which can run not only queries inside a database, but it also can run uh, built-in tasks like download or send something or email or whatever. And it can also run external programs. So for example, if you want to have like uh, complicated analysis, like if the number of sessions during the week was higher than 12, then send this. If that, send that. So, so it's very complicated. Not like Grafana, but I mean, it's very powerful. Um, as I said, it's very simple. How to get started? Uh, just only one comment, docker run. Um, you want to uh, publish ports 3000 is for Grafana, for dashboard UI, and like 8080 is for um, internal web UI to have the ability to add uh, database under monitoring. 
And that's all. And that's all. So if you don't want to run it on your local system, you can check it on the demo pgwatch.com. So let me show you. Here it is. So um, it's a Grafana version 8. So we updated it recently. So the last one is 9 point something. But anyway, so here we have a lot of um, pre-configured dashboards. So if we want to go like from the global view to the more like specific, we can check database overview or we can uh, check, uh, check the database overview without being a, a privileged user, like if we don't have access to uh, everything, or we can check uh, what changes were made to the uh, tables or, or, or objects, or we want, for example, to check the global database overview. Uh, on, this, on this level, we can see the information about our whole cluster, etc., etc. But I want you to show something else. This is uh, thank you. this is the um, uh, this is the adaptation of PG Watch by Postgres.ai company. Uh, so the, you probably heard about it. So what they did. So when we were talking with the guys, they said so. Uh, we are not happy with your dashboards. There are a lot of them, like fucking 20 or, or more. We don't want that. We, we want to give, uh, to give a user an idea that you can like, have uh, five steps so we can go from the global overview into the more detailed. And what they did, they are using the same components, everything the same. But the only difference is they are providing their own dashboards. So they uh, specifically named them like one global database overview, two database overview, three stat statements. We are focusing already on the queries. Four, we are focusing on tables. Five, on indexes, and so on and so on. And uh, these dashboards are really huge, huge. Like on my laptop, it is four screens. Everything you want to know about database is here: size, wraparound, uh, roles, legs, walls, everything. Right? Um, or if we just check the database overview. So the, uh, the, uh, the address is pgwatch.postgres.ai and the password is demo demo, login, login password. Yeah, so, so my point is that if you are not happy with the predefined, pre-installed dashboards, you, can, you should make your own, right? That's okay, and we can help you. Okay, so um, uh, how much time we have? Like five minutes, image. So, okay, so PG Watch three. Uh, so the author of PG Watch two is Carl Moppel, uh, and um, year ago he changed the position, and he's working now on. And other projects, so PG Watch, 2, oof, PG Watch 2 became um, an orphan, kind of. And the number of issues and pull requests and etc. is getting bigger and bigger. And uh, Hans Jürgen Schönig said, You, you know, go, do it. And I said, Okay. I will try, but I need like a couple of months to, to, to get the idea behind all this. Um, okay. So first I, like, I, I was trying to fix all these issues, like applying quick and dirty bug fixes. And what a nightmare. No, never, never do this. Later, I decided, no, it, it, it's not going to work. We need to, 
to apply some changes. For example, if we want to upgrade from one major version Grafana to another, we don't want to like execute direct queries on the Grafana database. We want to use like REST API or, or, or like import functionality. So Grafana knows how to import it correctly, right? And so after like several weeks, I understand that I want to change so much that I need to start a development for a new major version. Uh, the main idea why I, I wasn't happy is because of this. This is the uh, PG Watch 2 web UI. And it's written on Python, in, it's static, I, it has like uh, all dependencies, and upgrading all this garbage is not an easy, is not an easy task. So uh, my idea was, and, and that was like an, uh, a standalone module, right? So uh, the web UI thing was running <laughs> on the standalone basis inside the Docker. I just like said, why cannot we push the web UI into the collector, inside the collector, so it can uh, serve everything? And we did that. That is new web UI, which will be published, I hope, soon. So it's like responsible, it's React, it's Metro, whatever, I don't know, this, the, this, this uh, things. So we have like a matrix definitions, for example, um, different metrics can uh, can differ uh, between the versions, right? Because uh, some new columns may appear in the, the static collector tables or something may be deprecated. So we can have several metric definitions for like for different versions. And for example, here we have like SQL for metric for a regular user. And we have a special SQL for super user when you are like allowed to do everything you want, right? And of course, we want to, we want to specify uh, if we can run these metrics on primaries or only on standbys, right? Or can we like, can we, <clears throat> can we use some helpers functions for this metric? So all of this like stuff. And for that we have presets. So if we want to add a new database under monitoring, like, like I said, we have um, 34 metrics right now at the moment. Sometimes you don't need all of them. For example, if you are not using uh, PG Bouncer or PG Pool or Patroni or whatever, you don't want them, right? So uh, you can use like basic or minimal or whatever. So you specify like this database with this preset of metrics, go. And we're done. So um, yeah, that's probably um, all that I want to show you today. Um, let me check what slides we have. Yeah, so just in case internet is down, I have like screenshots. Um, yeah. So if you have a question or if you have a proposal, please write me, visit our GitHub pages, check, check it out. Like, don't be a stranger. If you have any question, I would be more than happy to answer it now or after the closing session. Any question? Yes, please. Yeah, okay, so um, the question was, 
the question was, will we fix multi-host connection streams? Yes. yes. Because we're not using neither, yes, I will neither do it PG immediately. Bouncer. Very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. It's probably, uh, it's probably the thing we didn't test it because, you know, when you're working on migration product, you're more like, oh, can I convert this Oracle statement into this Postgres one and multi-host? Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, can we use uh, an existing Grafana uh, instead of using the Grafana uh, provided by PG Watch? Yeah, of course, of course. Okay. So we have uh, in the in the repository we have uh, even a composer file, which show you how to split everything, and use your own. So you can like provide a uh, connection string to Grafana, and it will immediately start to like work with with that. Yeah. Any more questions? Thank you very much. You're a great audience.